Going welcome to RMA Fire. Let's check out how to create um, really art directable sails in Houdini. So we're gonna be ch we're we're gonna be jumping into this geometry sub right here, and this is what this is basically my three sails one, two, and three. And we're gonna I'm gonna be showing you how to create this. So the first thing is we got a we got ourselves a line with very little amount of points, and then I'm resampling it just so that we can get multiple points onto this line and applying a mountain sub. Um, you can see that we can tweak the amount of, you know, how much noise we want in there. And following that, we have a poly extrude that is extruding this line a little bit. And then from here, I'm extruding that further out okay so it's important to notice the length of it because that's gonna be playing a huge role in the next part of the tutorial once we do that then we hit the, the we're blasting one side of the of the sheet just so that we end up with just one one sheet and then I am going to divide use use a divide so that we can have like a breaker polygon subdivision set onto here um, before that I'm applying a transform and resizing the X on the scale and then this allows me to kind of shrink it down before subdividing it and that allows me to place these points and catch so I'll show you guys using this um, group selections I'm selecting the points that I'm gonna pin to the animation we'll talk about that in a second so onto the group if you create a group and then you select the bounding box you can select spherical bounding or any of these ones and then select points and then this is what's gonna um, allow me to, to select the points which are going to be pinned to the animation so you can use any sort of grouping technique to catch the points that you wish to um, pin okay so we named this pin B and pin C then following that I've got a magnet top with a meta ball um, here and what this is allowing me to do is um, I can have the meta ball sort of deform it a little bit so that it gives me a little bit of a more interesting shape before we go through vellum. Then our transform right here has the move center to axis and then I'm positioning it in the right place where the ship would be. So you, you can place it anywhere you want. And then comes vellum, comes with the fun stuff. So with vellum constraints, it's being set to cloth and has pin B and pin C, the, the pins to the animation, which are the groups that we built right here. Um, and then it comes through a vellum solver, which has a default of negative um, 9.8 on the gravity, on the negative forces here on the Y axis, but I set it to negative two so that it kind of falls in a more you know, a slower, dramatic, sort of poetic way. Um, so let's check it out. Uh, once we hit play, um, Houdini is going to calculate it and um, we'll be able to see we'll be able to see it fall properly. Now you can see right here that our pins are actually sticking pins and pins so so whatever you pin to the the points that you select and the groups those aren't ever going to move um so that's that let me show you guys i've got a cache of this right here um let's give it a second so as you can see it it falls down properly Okay, um,
All right, and then what I'm doing right here is applying a time shift. I'm gonna have to cache it all the way to the end. Um, all right, Let's just cache this real quick. I'll be right back.
and we're back all right guys so check it out so after we have done our cache we're able to scrub and check out what the what this animation is looking like so so far it looks nice it feels like it's working um let me double check something real quick so this is something that i didn't show you guys um i apologize if you've already cached but um inside of the valum solver i have added a constrained uh property and a pop force and this is just so that we can give it a little bit of variation with a tiny bit of amplitude um and this is also what's helping push um you know and give it a, a little bit of movement and stuff um and i have a little bit of wind pushing our pushing it forwards um so that it feels like so that it feels like it's pulling forward with a little bit of variation in there all right and what i'm what's happening here is that i'm utilizing a time shift that is pushing um that's only showing us the last frame so the the hundredth frame so as you can see frame 100 let me just reset this real quick um so we're seeing the last frame of the animation and i'm using a uv project as you can see it's projecting the uvs directly like that and then with the uv quick shade we can see what whatever texture that you want to apply so with the uv project you can kind of move it and whatever texture you want you can place and then this attribute copy is copying the uvs from here onto the animated um onto the animation right so then once we copy those uvs you can create another uv quick shade with the same texture and and there you go and then you will be able to have it working like that um then i've got a time sheet and my material and then i've got a couple of other sales which my sale has three my ship has three sales um and there you go you've got a nice animation here Another thing that you can do is add a subdivide in the end, um, right here, which is going to smooth it even more. But the reason why I'm not subdividing it there is because I am subdividing it in render one 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 rendering. Um, so I'm using I'm reusing Redshift and I'm subdividing it here in the enable tessellation. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed and looking. I look forward to teaching and showing more cool tips.